the marinade. There's no O in marinade. Let's try it one more time. Ready? One, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> the marinade. <laughs> marrow. Marrow. Marinade. Bone marinade. The marinade. The marinade. With Jason Earl. Welcome to The Marinade with Jason Earl, a free-flowing conversation about the creative process with creative people. This is episode 135, and our guest is Kyla Janae Lacey. Kyla is a writer, performer, and visual artist who was born in the Midwest and raised in Central Florida. She's been written about and featured in the New York Times, The Atlantic, The Washington Post, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver and more. Her poetry has been viewed over 50 million times on various platforms. Her Twitter account and its ever-changing clever names is a must-follow. She is brilliant hilarious kind to animals and an overall badass this is a far-reaching conversation that touches on race gender performance history and so much more everyone it is my great honor to bring you my conversation with kyla janae lacy and before i do so please enjoy her incredible poem code switch from her album the end of an error i have friends that are women I even have women in my family. Shit, my mom's a woman. Some of them I have sex with, some of them I love, so how can I be a sex, I mean racist, I mean, walking around with their asses out, fancy shoes, suggestive outfits, how can I not think they all aren't thugs? I mean, walking around with their asses out, fancy shoes, suggestive outfits, how can all of them be deserving of my respect and love? I mean, I respect and love my daughter. She's half black, so how can I be a race? I mean, shoot, she's half of me. So how can I be a sexist? I just won't have her walking around like the women I take advantage of, the women I like to fuck, the ones who dress like they sell drugs. I mean, the thugs. What do you mean my racism is like sexism? I'm not even race, I mean sexist. I love my black queens. Just not all of y'all are queens. And I get to choose which ones I love and which ones I abuse even though I ain't shit. I mean, I love black people. I just hate niggers. He wanted it. Standing there asking me to mind his business, he should have just showed me his ID. I mean, she wanted it. Senator, they're asking me to give her the business. Fuck her age. I don't need her ID. I mean, he committed a crime. He shouldn't have been black. He shouldn't have talked back. So, of course, he deserved to be shot at. I mean, she shouldn't have been drinking. So, it wasn't really rape. She didn't respond to my advances. So, of course, she deserved to be shot at. I mean, how is it police brutality when you commit a crime? His body is not his if it's lying in the street. I mean, how is it rape when you're already mine? Her body is not hers if it's lying in the fetal position. I mean, black people are lazy and just not as smart. They need our direction. I mean, women are weak and just not as smart. They need our direction. I mean, black bodies were only built for hard work. I mean, women's bodies were only built for childbirth. I mean, yeah, boy. I mean, big female. I mean, I don't understand why I can't call you guys that when you call each other that. I mean, I don't understand why I can't call you that when it's a scientific fact. I mean, black people have nothing to offer, but I still love their culture and the ones that I can have sex with. I mean, gays have nothing to offer the black community, but I still love lesbians, the ones that I can have sex with. I mean, prison overseer. I mean, polygamous. I mean, there's only one race, the human race, so all lives matter. I mean, you were black first, so concentrate on that. I mean, stop blaming the white community for your mistakes. There's nothing holding you all back. Look at Oprah. I mean, stop blaming black men for your mistakes. There's nothing to hold you all back. Look at Oprah. I mean, white women are just more attractive. I mean, light-skinned women are just more attractive. I mean, you're a reverse racist. Every single time something doesn't go your way, you all want to pull the race card. I mean, you must hate men. Every single time something doesn't go your way, you all want to pull the rape card. I mean, Daniel Holtzcott couldn't rape all of those women. I mean, Bill Cosby couldn't have raped all of those women. I mean, being a black woman, it's like standing in the middle of an intersection where racism and sexism collide. Boom. Um, you got good shit. <laughs> she got me into psilocybin. And so that's our Christmas like tradition now. We trip on Christmas. I tried LSD. I feel like that. Can we talk about this in the podcast? Yeah, hell yeah, okay. we can. Let's do it. We're rolling. So. Oh, well, yeah. this is awkward. Okay, do I have headphones? You don't have headphones. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, I can get you headphones if you want them. No, no, no. I was just checking the monitor. Um, get that closer to you if possible. I don't want you to have to lean over, but now I want to decorate my um light picture, my light, <coughs> um, my electrical plugs. Oh yeah, Outlet. she did that a few years ago. Words, words, Kyla. <laughs> 
All right, I think we're good. All right. So if you're like right there at that level, I think. Can Volume you sh- wise or weed wise? Uh, well, I mean, you know, the weed thing we can experiment with. Have some fun with it. Volume wise, you sound great. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, we can talk. We can get right into talking about drugs. Um, I was gonna ask the heart, the really hard hitting question to start you off. I'm speaking of heart hitting. <laughs> Heart hitting. <coughs> None of this is edited out, by the way. It's just going to be fun. like 30 minutes of you coughing with cool. quips in between. I um, am high, so. <laughs> let's get of, it then. You can't have the Fiji water dog. I think it's a, it's important that we start with the most important question, which is, is it blue toothosis? Is it blue tephus? So Roy said it was toothosis. Okay. I said it's Tephus. I okay. think. Where I think it's like the. I voted Tephus. I personally believe it's Tephus. I think yeah. I think Roy said it was Tephus. So I have to go look at the poll again. <clears throat> Ultimately, it came out. To, I checked it right before because I, I oh, wanted to. Oh, so what? What was the? Tephus tuf, tuf, one. Oh, fuck. Fucking Roy. Fuck We're talking about Roy Wood Jr. folks listening, and this is a, I, I I wanted to ask that question off the bat just because <laughs> Kyle's not I, checking the Twitter. I'm checking this. No, I'm checking to see which one Roy wait, uh, picked. Because uh, I'm pretty sure. He said it was two faces. His was yeah, two faces. Okay. All right. So he won. God dang it. Fucking A, Roy. Fucking A. Well, I'm sorry that, that things didn't turn out the ah, way that you had you wanted. You win some, you lose some. Yeah. I've, I've I lost worse. <laughs> well, you don't lose much online. And that is. Ooh, wow. Uh yeah. That is something that I've... What? Huh? My phone is breaking up. What'd you say? I said, you don't lose much online. What? Huh? Let me put my phone on silent. (laughs) You don't lose much. You do a lot of winning. I need to stop doing the battles altogether, but I think the Orlando Tragic fans were mad at me today. I know. uh, You brought it up. I wasn't going to say anything. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful. It's a beautiful day in Orlando right now. (laughs) Um, I mean, what happened was when I was a little girl, I was at an Anita Baker concert with my mom and my brother, and we had amazing seats. We were like second row with some ridiculous shit like that. And what was, I don't even remember the name of the place. Was it the Bob Carr? Mm-hmm. I think it was the Bob Carr. Okay. And I was sitting in front of several magic players. Okay. <laughs> Nick Anderson was one of them. <laughs> um, Tree Rollins gave me his um, autograph. Brian Shaw, I think he was just excited that somebody knew who he was. <laughs> and I mean, I was a really athletic kid, so I knew who these people were. Like, it wasn't like I w- didn't know who they were. Right. And um, Nick Anderson's like, maybe later. And I was like, I'm a little girl. Yeah. And so um, he didn't want to give me his autograph, and I hated them forever. And then I also was born in Chicago, so I like came to school with like a Bulls jersey on once, and they're like, the, the kids made fun of me, you know, because it was 94, 95 season and Shaq was coming harder, you know, right. even though his biological didn't bother. Do you remember <laughs> that song? No. They had, you don't, nobody remember. It's like, it's like Shazam, right? Like nobody remembers when like, cause Shaq used to I rap remember for Shaq, like, I remember the record Shaq Diesel. I had, yeah. I had, I had the cassette. And then, like, I guess when all they you were, jealous punks can't stop my dogs. Yeah, yeah, when they were going to the Eastern Conference Finals, which feels like forever ago, that one time. Yeah. Um, like it was a big deal, and yeah. so they had this like rap song on the radio, and it was. I mean, I guess it's like it would have been like the the icky shuffle if they actually. But Shaq had like yeah he he sold like a million records. I, I'm, I don't know. I, I don't. Why. I think that number's right. I believe it. Uh, I, That's the worst. But you got to remember, like in the '90s, you know, a CD Shaq and was the like Nickens. And I think they were called. It's crazy to think that CDs were ten dollars back then, right? When you think about it, and people had hundreds of CDs. Hundreds of CDs. Yeah. My mother had like hundreds. Yeah. And they were like 10, 15 bucks back then. Yeah. Even with inflation today, I don't think I would do that. I mean, my record collection's right there. 
and then I've got it. That's but that's vintage. Se- yeah, like that's that's but not I'm, gonna that's appreciated in value, right? Like, right. No true. one's going to be like, oh, you got a Phil Collins CD. This is awesome. <laughs> like the technology uh, hasn't even. I mean, okay, so do you still listen to CDs a little bit? A lot. Ah! A lot. Yeah. So my car is like not old old but Mine is. it has an old ass like uh electronics it's, interface right you're so, into the uh, like it's is it like a vintage thing it's like a feel it's a lot of things like the sound quality is great i like being able to just like pop in the record listen to the whole album you know i'm not flipping through i'm not playing a playlist or some there's shit there's that you know there's that 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 has kind of gone by the wayside but also i think in the last 20 years without completely aging myself, I think that musicality has depended way less on that, Mm -hmm. where like you could listen to an album in its entirety and it'd be an enjoyable experience. I don't think many artists today really have that, but I mean, because it's very much a single driven market, so. Yeah. Now I do like a good vinyl though. The scratchy scratch noise, it's something about it. It's like rich, Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a whole, I mean, it's, I try not to make it my whole personality, but it's definitely like a, it's You're my artsy, collection, it's you know what I mean? It's yeah. be who you are. Thank you. I appreciate this validation. This not, is starting off just no, perfectly. No, listen, I, like, I, so I, the listeners, I don't know how much they know, and I don't know how much you want to tell them, but it's obviously very artsy vibe here. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's very comforting, actually. I'm glad, and then that's why I'm really glad. I really appreciate you coming over because hey. it, I think it makes such a difference to sit like this versus the studio in this space. Yeah, yeah. Or like if we're doing Zoom or something, you know. Oh yeah, it's like, yeah. I'm starting a podcast too. So. Oh cool. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, let's definitely talk about that. I want to go back to Twitter real quick. Okay. Because um, I'm curious. Like you eviscerate motherfuckers on Twitter, <sighs> and I'm curious, like. You get exhausted from yeah. that? Okay. So I think it, it's a it's a big trigger for me. Uh-huh. And I have to work on that. It's a big trigger. And what it is, is I grew up in Seminole County. So right. it's not far. Yeah. I grew up, most of my teachers weren't super stoked that their brightest student was also their darkest student. Mm-hmm. So I have a big trigger in terms of like, no, I am really smart. Yeah. And just, you know, as a general statement, I'm an artist, so people kind of have this very much like, oh, she's not, you know, she's just doing shit kind of approach. A um, friend of mine, Matt, was fired for for showing my work to his class. Mm-hmm. And so I went to, it was a big deal. Like, I mean, he, we were, he's, I can't really speak too much about it, but it's, it's a big deal. Yeah. But I went to the hearing and the lawyer was like, oh, you know, well, what do you have a de- degree in? You know, because I knew he didn't think that I was halfway intelligent. And I was like, history? <laughs> um, I had a court case recently. <clears throat> and I can't speak too much on that because I was supposed to sign some things. Okay. But I do know that I don't think that the other person... They did their research after the fact. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. Like mm-hmm. they came in and and they called me Kayla, and they were like, "Oh, well." Um, and I said, "Actually, it's it's pronounced Kyla." And he goes, "Oh, well, I'll just write it phonetically." And he writes K Y dash L A. And I said, "So you agree? It's pronounced <laughs> the way that it's spelled." And. I can't like again. I I'm not allowed to say too much, but I will just say that after the first couple of meetings, he probably did his research. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he realized like, oh, she might be slightly intelligent. So I I recognize that it is a trigger. I think as a black person, as a woman, I'm always discounted for my intelligence, Mm. and so it's like I I have a lot of words that I know. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, I studied foreign language. Like, that right. was my original major. I was, like, uh, studied French and German and Spanish. And so I've always loved words. I've always loved how they, like, work. Uh, and so whenever somebody just says something, and I think Twitter's a weird place, right? Twitter yeah. is purposely contrarian. Mm-hmm. Twitter does it versus, like, the old people app, you know, mm-hmm. Facebook. It's way more like, hey, you know, let's talk about this. Let's have an open discussion. Twitter is like, I'm going to quote tweet, and I'm guilty of that, right? Sure. To show you how dumb this motherfucker is. Yeah. And 
and um, I could take a joke, but I don't want to be the joke. Yeah. Uh, so I think sometimes people just see like, oh, she's not going to say something back because my Twitter picture looks pretty innocuous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's like I can take a joke, but I, I don't like disrespect. That's kind of weird. The thing I don't understand is, and maybe I'm giving these people too much credit, but like the pinned tweet is this masterpiece, white privilege. <sighs> and you like and you pull no punches in that poem like who who the fuck I sees think that people, and thinks I'm gonna mess with this person? But I also don't think people know that's me in the tweet uh, because my hair is straightened and uh, straightened today. But ninety percent of the time, my hair is in an afro, uh -huh. and I had had it flat iron, and I was like, oh, I like this picture, and I just kind of then things were happening where I was like. I shouldn't change my picture too much because I change my Twitter name all the time. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think that people, because there were people who had been following me and they seen the video and didn't know it was me. Or, oh, wow. Yeah, so that's a, a thing that happens to me a lot is that people will see my work or like my tweets yeah. and they won't put won't two and two together. Even the artwork, like they won't even put two and two together that it's the same person that's doing those things. That's lazy. Eh, I mean. <laughs> I think. I think part of it, it's not necessarily their fault. It's the way that the internet is structured. Uh -huh. The internet is very much structured to share um, results, not progress. Yeah. And True. that includes, like, one of the biggest things that was happening recently was, and you see me complain about people stealing my work all the time. Yeah. But one of my other poems, Frenemies, went viral. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really have much to do with it because these large pages took it. They did black and white screen, which I was like, all right. I, but I mean, that was their format. But they, they were putting their watermark on my work. And so, the yeah. So mm, the first mm. couple of times it was like, okay, because they would tag me in the caption. Yeah. And the first couple of times I like I roll, I roll. And I'm like, you guys have seven over 7.5 million views last time I checked. Jesus. And so other pages were taking it, other pages were taking it, other per pages were taking it. And by the time it got into TikTok, people didn't know that it was mine. Yeah. So um, like one page, I told her, I was like, take my shit down. Yeah. Because she was like, well, you know, I said, what makes you think that in what world you didn't provide any for crafty, you weren't part of production, you weren't part of post production, you weren't part of editing the video, you weren't part of sound. Not even to mention like the memorization, the writing, the editing, the knowing the things. Someone's here. We got a guard dog. You guys have hibiscus. Yeah, we do. It's like my house. <laughs> I have pink hibiscus. It's like, it's just like, it's weird because like every artsy person has like the same vibe, but like everything's <laughs> totally different at the same time. That's great. Um, but no, they were taking the video and so like one, I had like, this was like the third time it happened and you're talking millions of views later. Hey, buddy. Hey, you're going to have to go outside. You're going to have to go outside. What a good. No, listen, I mean, <laughs> I have I have cats. They like right. to be in my Zoom calls, whether <laughs> I like them to be or not. Yeah. Um, but no, so it, it got to a point like the third page did. And I was like, OK, I'm, I'm this isn't fun anymore. And so I was like. What makes you think you can watermark my work? Well, we, we put, put you in the caption. Yeah, but you watermarked my work. I said, you didn't even ask. Well, we were gonna, we, we were in a hurry. A hurry for what? Were you menstruating? Like, are you serious? <laughs> and again, it's like you spent, you put some cheesy background music and like, but, but asking the actual person whose work it is, if you could use it for your own promotion. Mm -hmm. And so I, I sometimes feel like I'm beating a dead horse. Um, but I'm also glad that I'm at a point in my career where I can say no and other other poets won't be as likely to be, you know, well, I get the clout, so I have to take the abuse. Right. Uh, and they know what it is. Like, they know that the people want, you know, their work to be seen. But it's at what cost? If I have to sacrifice my anonym anonymity for you to have 
a claim to my stuff, I don't I don't want it. Like yeah. I am very much attached to who like my work is. Like I'm very much the same person. I don't believe in separating the artist from the art. Like mm. because if I wrote it when I was being an asshole, I'm an asshole. Like mm. so I'm I'm just very big on, you know, my credit and then I see like or I'll see memes with that I know I wrote, you know, mommy loves wine pages. <laughs> Or um, I've had like Occupy Democrats steal my stuff. Oh, or, sure. Yeah, and it's like, are you you're you were supposed to be yeah, for yeah, the yeah. people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're supposed to be now for the people. Yeah, yeah. Um, not not to excuse anybody else's behavior. No, but like, but that's like, your like whole yeah, thing. that's literally your shtick. Ninety nine yeah. percenters, like, come on. Uh, and I I think too again because what I write. I am able to write about things that are completely spectrumed mm. because I write things that are really funny. At least I think so. Mm -hmm. um, Agreed. But I also write stuff that's like very serious mm. and like very socially aware. And I will say that when white privilege went viral, it was very difficult for people to, uh, in their mind process that it was the same person. And I was like, I mean, mm. you see my stories on Instagram. Like I'm, I'm an idiot half of the day, right? Mm. Like I'm singing to my cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it's, again, people just don't know it's the same person. And I think part of it is people aren't used to somebody being multifaceted too. Yeah. You know, when you present yourself online, you kind of have to, this is this is my lane and I just, I drive all over. Yeah. <laughs> ah! I think that's, I'm so glad you do. I think that's part of what I love about following you i mean you're my favorite hey. twitter follow i gotta be and nice soon <laughs> i mean i did not appreciate the magic hate today i will say that ah, i will be honest with the you magic about got that a good team they're headed in the right direction and palo is the future and i am willing to concede to magic greatness once the magic become great listen i am a fair person <laughs> i'm a fair person but it was a literal joke that people <laughs> were really upset about. And I was like, it's a, it's a simple joke. I think the most, like, I love sports, but my whole online presence is the podcast, yeah. right? Like, I, I almost, I, I put the dogs on there every once in a while. I mean, they're, they're, they're stuff, cute right? people. Yeah. yeah. But, I, but I, for the most part, I'm only talking about creativity and that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, of course, when the former president was in office, I had some shit to say. Uh, and with our governor in office, I had some shit to say. God, that guy is such an I, awful person. He's the fucking worst. I, I know, uh, interject real quick, but yeah. I legitimately did not think that there were there would be a politician worse than Donald Trump. I mean, Cruz yeah. is up there. Yeah. Cruz and Abbott are up there. Yeah. But DeSantis is... It's a different level. Wow, what a despot. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's probably the most wretched person I've seen in history in a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's given Hitler. So, but w when I, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. given Hitler. Yeah. It's given real. Yeah, for real. Um, and that makes people uncomfortable because they don't want to acknowledge it, but it's fucking real. Um, I mean, hey, coming from a history major, boom. I think people don't want to... DeSantis is smart, sure. very smart, sure. right? Like Yale, Harvard smart. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people describe him as the smartest person in the room. Mm -hmm. I think the problem with intelligence is that we equate intelligence or an IQ with an EQ and they're just not, not the, same, the same. Yeah. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. Well, and speaking of which the EQ of, uh, and the IQ of a lot of uh, sports fans can come mm. into play when you're saying stuff like that. I don't get like uh, all my sports tweets do way better than anything else that I talk about. And I'll like put so much work into an episode, <laughs> right? Like I've worked my ass off on this episode. I've done the research. This is I've, gonna be a good one though. It so is it's, a, it's gonna be a great one. It's already a great one. Yay. Right? We're already on fire. It's, I'll have to come back too. Yeah, it'd be wonderful. And like we could like this is all so beautiful. And 
then I'll tweet about it and and maybe nobody will say a word. And then I'll tweet about like the Reds calling up their their prospect mm-hmm. and it's like just all directions, right? All directions. People just get so emotional about sports. About sports. I I think the most interesting thing is like, you know, I mean, people are like, "Oh, you hate men." <laughs> I think I present things in a way that makes men uncomfortable, uh-huh. but I don't think that men realize how much vitriol that they spout up out about women online. Mm-hmm. And so when they when I say something back, it's like, "Ah." But I will say I write twice a week for this publication i will literally take paragraphs and tweet the paragraphs and the paragraphs will go viral but no one will read the article that's infuriating whoa it's infuriating i wrote an article about why we shouldn't say karen anymore i read that two minute read it was a short read People spent more time arguing with me in the comments about saying Karen than actually reading the article. It was worth it was it was a short read and it was worth reading. Plus, you know, my mom was kind of over it. So. <laughs> <laughs> and the lady I work for, her name is Karen too. Oh, that's funny. So yeah. But it was just Karen's. essentially like call racism what it is. Like racism doesn't deserve a cute little moniker or like a nickname. It deserves to be rightfully called out. Right. And again, my mom's name is Karen. So right. <laughs> I'm a little partial. I love that you do that calling out uh, of people. Um, I want to call out Jake Shields again so much. I was going to do something <laughs> real mean, but I was like, that's not fair. Well, you may, you make, you make folks think like you make me think about um, one of the things that you've talked about a fair amount is white people using African American vernacular. Yeah. And I like as somebody raised on Outcast. Yeah. I, I, I know yeah. that I do it. You know. Yeah. And so you've forced me to like look at myself and catch myself in moments because I think that there's this interesting overlap between. Yeah. Like you know, that's southern, a thing, right? Like being that, that's southern. That's absolutely and, you a know, thing. I think. There is like, there's not a space, a healthy space for me to say every single moment is it's bothersome, right? Right. I think what happens is when the people who are learning the culture become the people who are driving it. Mm. And I think that's the issue. Because I can't sit here as somebody who's literally learned multiple languages that are European to say, and obviously there's, you know, different issues in terms of like, well, it's a, it's a, you know, whatever. But I think part of the issue is like when you go to the store and you see pickles, oh snap. Right. Like, and again with me, right. Like Mm. a lot of my stuff has been commodified. Like Mm -hmm. a lot of my stuff has been taken and, you know, used without me being able to make any money. And then I think, too, it's why are you using that language, right? Like, mm. are you – because I got a friend, and sometimes people don't know that she is white when she is on the phone. And she <laughs> grew up – like, I mean, the lady who practically raised her is a black woman, so this is very much how she talks. Like, yeah. this is very much how she speaks. And I don't – I know that's my friend, so obviously I'm going to feel differently about it, but I don't even register because it's how she talks. Yeah. Um. I think – and again, I grew up – where I code switched all the time. Um, but also sometimes when you hear people use AAVE, it's only when they're trying to be angry and aggressive. Like, mm. I'll beat your ass. Like, mm. okay, Chandler. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> relax. You know, call your dad <laughs> so you can call the lawyer. Like, relax. <laughs> um, and I think, so certain things like that or when they are trying to and i see like people doing it on purpose to be like in my comments because you know i had to check on twitter all the lists i was on oh my god no wonder because they were just responding to stupid shit like me saying that kiki palmer was my aunt and sister Uh like they were just and i'm like how are they seeing these i'm on their lists Uh, so i had to like uh block everybody uh but i think too like sometimes they'll say it to me and they'll like mock me and I'm like, I don't. Oh, uh, well, that's that's just. Yeah. Racist. So, yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying. Like, yeah. I think that there is a space for there's going to be an overlap. So to yeah. fight every single overlap is ridiculous. But I think when there's also 
when you know that you were made fun of for speaking that way and now uh, it's a cool way to speak uh, you know there's still that like there's still that rawness there's still that soreness of saying like yeah you know um because like i remember when i was growing up and kyla why don't you talk like a black girl what does that mean what does that even mean yeah i live down the street you yeah, know so yeah. i think it's sometimes it's way less listen and way more speak yeah and i think if it was balanced more i don't think people would have as big a deal with it but i think too there is so little left of culture with black people that is tangible and hasn't been commodified you know so it kind of there is an understandable sensitivity you know it's like like i said oh snap pickles which are Tasty, by the way. <laughs> Good ass pickles, you know. But yeah, I, you know, I obviously, I it's a different, very different. It's a different thing, but a, a similar kind of concept of like, I know that I remember going to college, and I grew up in Ocala. Okay, okay. Right. So I went to college. And, Sorry to hear that, by the way. Um, oh my yeah. god, yeah. Well, yeah. we don't have time to unpack too much of that, <laughs> oh. but we might get into it. I, Ocala was in the news. <laughs> recently unfortunately so yeah saw that times are changing not really not really mm-hmm. no i i think it's backslid quite a bit i hate going there now um, i don't know i listen i don't blame you yeah it and i don't think i realized i i know i didn't realize in the moment how racist and homophobic yeah. and just bigoted overall Florida. ocala is especially <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i mean ocala is especially bad yeah. about that stuff yeah and you know, when you're in it and you're a white cisgender heterosexual guy, you, you don't yeah. fucking notice that, right? Like I didn't, mm-hmm. I, I didn't notice how bad it was. It took me getting out. It took me like, mm-hmm. you know, traveling, experiencing things, reading, um, to get to a place where I went like, oh man, my upbringing was fucked up. You know, yeah. like <laughs> like that's not yeah. how the world should be. <laughs> but what's crazy is I had that same experience. Like when I went to college, I went to UCF mm-hmm. um, because I had moved to Florida as a kid, but I like moved from Chicago. So I lived in a very black neighborhood to a very white neighborhood. Like it was wow. complete night and day. So to go from like the South Loop of Chicago to Winter Springs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, and to, um, Damn. How you know, were you? Uh, was that nine when I moved? Oh, shit. So, okay. Yeah, so you're like was, really aware. Yeah. Yeah. Of- so it was. It was like right when things are important. Yeah. Um, and to go from, you know, I legitimately did not know that black people were minorities. Oh, wow. Like yeah, legitimately yeah. didn't know. I That's interesting. Through. So um, to go from being surrounded by kids that look like you to being like one or two yeah. of other, you know, like black kids in the class was a culture shock to say the least yeah and i experienced a lot of racism whether it was blatant because some of it was Mm -hmm. or whether it was you know teachers playing you know games with my grades or whatever because i didn't get c i got c's on english papers that's yeah, crazy. yeah. Like I got C's yeah. on English papers, and I was correcting other kids' papers. Yeah, yeah. I had like, so not just like the racism of low expectations. No, but, but like and, and actually changing your. What's crazy is wow. I because I'll say her name, Mrs. Bronner, yeah. my fifth grade teacher. I remember specifically asking to be tested for gifted. Yeah, and she would not. She said I wasn't ready to be tested. Jesus. But every Friday, she would send me to. The kindergarten class, the three kids with the highest scores in the class would go to the kindergarten class to tutor in reading. So essentially, I was allowed to advance the education of a, a of a white student, but not my own. Oh, my God. Because we we, we were tutoring them to yeah. like because they were, you know, so I just thought, you know, stuff like that uh, was stuff that I grew up with. And. I mean, my drama teachers weren't nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. and you know, but you're like, damn, like, what the fuck did I do to you? Yeah. And so as you age and I came out of that, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and I mean, I was a weird kid, too. So um, shout out to my German teacher because she is the best ever. Oh, but nice. um, and we're still we like we still speak like, you know, That's years great. later. But yeah. Um, yeah. Like that was my experience. Like when I got to college, I was just kind of like. 
oh, wow, that was a lot. Well, you know? For context for people listening who don't know this area, like UCF ain't that far no, from no. Winter Springs, <laughs> right? No, it's like, not. It's no. right down the road. It's literally, what, 10 miles? Maybe. Not even 10. Maybe. No, not yeah. even. That's, that's maybe five miles away. Yeah. But it is a totally yeah. different world. Yeah. Yeah, it is a totally different world. That's really Yeah, because like, depending on what part of, you know, Oviedo area, yeah. Yeah, it's um, really interesting. And just going to college and seeing, like, I happen to accidentally have all black roommates. Mm. So that was a, you know, and I'm like still listening to Fiona Apple and they're like, what are you listening? to and I still listen to Fiona Apple but yeah. um it was very much a culture shock in college because I was very much bombarded with a lot of these negative stereotypes that I'd also internalized mm. um you know in high school I was very much compartmentalized for mm-hmm. people you mm-hmm. know for their whether I agreed to it or not you know it was like oh you're different or you and I'm like I'm only different because you like me I'm only different because you've I defy what you think black people are. And Mm -hmm. that is the only way that you can feel safe about liking me is Mm -hmm. because you were taught that this is what black people are like. And I'm not like that. Yeah. How did how did you. You know. uh, Now you can go on Twitter and ruin somebody. (sighs) But then like were you in person like eviscerating people <laughs> or like how were you react or did you just take so it my you first know? i was in eighth grade mm-hmm. and i'm a very sensitive person which is mm-hmm. probably why i react too too often for my own personal mental health yeah um but i was in eighth grade and i remember this girl jamie and something was happening but it was literally right in front of the garbage just dumps dumpster in front of my mom's <laughs> house that she lives in today And Jamie said, the color of your skin, it was like a couple of kids, the color of your skin makes you look like shit. And I will never forget that. And I said, oh, give it up for Jamie. Good one. Everybody (laughs) clap for Jamie. And everybody started clapping, but they were laughing at her. And she felt so tiny. Yeah. And um, and then like my best friend whose birthday is, well, in high school, I had two best friends and one Uh is birthday today. But she, um. She and I wrote a really mean note, and I think I wrote the note. But uh. so humor was kind of your way of early on processing it. And I wish I were it. better at it then. Uh, uh-huh. I wish I were better at it then. Yeah, I yeah. think I did so much trying to stay like under the fray. Yeah. Um, I think that was like important for me to because it was stressful. Like school yeah. was stressful. I went to Lake Brantley like. So that Mm. should tell you, Mm -hmm. like, it was a stressful environment. Mm -hmm. And I think I just really did my best to kind of survive it. Yeah. Um, But I didn't know how stressful it was until I left, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It does make sense. Yeah. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. I mean, I I think what, you know, being the white guy in that environment, I have spent most of my adulthood – Un, like rewiring my mm-hmm, brain mm-hmm. about things, right? Because you you you're growing up in this environment where the norm is racist, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. so then as an adult, I can't just be like, "Oh, I'm no longer racist," yeah, yeah right? Like yeah. I have to go, "Oh shit, that thought was a racist thought." Yeah, I need to process that, you know, or and that. Honestly, I think we're all guilty of things that we should have to com- unpack and like confront. Like, yeah. you know, even me, I'm like, oh, that's a shitty thing to think that's a shitty thing to think like and i mean that's just kind of a human nature thing but it's like also do i go spread those thoughts do i like if you ever actually even see me um online like i'll never be like oh your lips or you know like i think the most i've ever said is like go fuck your sister you know like some shit like that (laughs) yeah so (laughs) but um as a general statement, folks, if I'm, you are not already convinced to follow ah! Kyla on all the social like medias, you f- could be you fucking with me, <laughs> but you'd be fucking your sister, like some shit like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think for me, I do my best to not um, combat people versus the racism. Like I, my mm. issue because like, oh, you hate white people. I don't. I legitimately don't. I hate yeah. white supremacy, and so you'll never really see me saying something like stereotypical like i don't mm. you know some people say mayo i don't i don't engage in that like yeah yeah because i'm i'm not interested in being like somebody that i 
that is harming me. Like I'm not interested in using his tactics, their tactics to to get them to to be nice. I'm not used. I'm not interested in that. Right. But I will talk about your ass a little bit in a different way. (laughs) Well, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about. I got to see you perform last night. Oh, you. Uh, Why didn't you say hi? Well, because there's a lot of people, and like I'm still getting comfortable with being in crowds. Okay. Like okay. COVID no, world. Listen. And uh, so I was just like, I don't want to sit. Like, no, I don't wanna, you should have like, said hi. And then also, I was really tired. Okay, that's about, understandable. And I was about just on the cusp of getting the drunk. social battery. And well, and also I was yeah. like kind of buzzed, and I was yeah. like, I don't want her first impression of me was, to listen, be that. Like, I was, I was the edible hit. You know, if I'm being real, it's listen. like part of it was I had a half a buzz, and I no, was like, no, no, <laughs> listen, uh, the, my edible hit while I was on stage. So I was like, okay, we're just gonna go with it. Oh, That's you fine. crushed! I Thank mean, you. Crushed! Like I have been looking forward to seeing you live for a long time. Well, you had to come to the hour show. The what? I'm doing a whole hour. When? In July. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm doing do a whole that. hour. Yeah, I, it wasn't enough for me. I wanted more. Yeah, but, I'm doing um, a whole hour, and okay. if not more, because I, um, we actually, I'm actually going to go look at the venue when I leave here. Okay, but I, um, I, you know, I did college shows for ten years. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't officially made the announcement. I probably won't be doing t- college tours anymore. But oh, okay. Um, I guess this is official, right? Uh, okay. But yeah, I've Why you know not? so oh, college tours. <laughs> I was talking to my friend who also does, who did college shows for a long time, and uh-huh. he was probably the most book poet in the college tour circuit, and I was uh, second. Okay. So, um, I mean, we're aging out. He's he's a bit mm. older than me, but not by much. Uh, we look younger, so that works. Uh, but the travel is awful. Oh, uh huh. It's awful yeah and when you first start out, it's like really a great opportunity. The market has changed. Like, there's so much, but. Like if I were to do my own tour, for instance, I can kind of okay. I'm I'm pick a big city, you know, whatever. In college yeah. tours, I have to fly in. Um, I'll have to drive a few hours yeah. to do my show. Then I'll have to turn back around and drive more hours to go back towards the airport. Right. And you know, get a hotel, maybe get something to eat if it's not super late, and then fly out early in the morning. Because mm-hmm. like in February, I did for three weeks. I did uh, thirteen flights in three weeks. Oh goodness! Yeah. Uh, so I was f- flying for four days in a row right. every week for three weeks. Right. Um. And then, you know, it's like when I first started, you know, I was younger. I was 10 years younger, so I was closer to their age. Yeah, yeah. Um, And I think the climate at colleges were different. You know, it was way more we want to be open-minded. Now it's there are people who want to be open-minded and there are people who absolutely think being open-minded is a bad idea. Yeah. Which is crazy when you think about, like, that is essentially what, like, being open-minded and and cognizant of other people's environments or or things that are different is somehow bad. So that's the whole, that defeats the whole purpose of college. I mean, to me, it's it's all about the exposure to new ideas. I 100% learned way more outside of classroom uh, than I did inside of the classroom. Yeah. But, you know, so the travel has kind of been... A lot since I got in a car accident in 2019. Hmm. Um, but also, I I was heckled twice, which isn't really common for me to be heckled. Yeah. And one of the the times I was heckled, the the a student advisor said I handled it really well, but it was very much an 18 year old cis head white guy who just got to he was freshman. You know, yeah. it was literally freshman week and. You know, just wanted to be an asshole. And, he, you know, yeah. he's like, oh, can I do some poems? And she was like, no. And said, please, it's really good. You know, just being ridiculous. And so, I, you know, he read it in front of me. And he said, did you like it? And I said, honestly, no. <laughs> and I, you know, again, yeah. because people don't have a problem being rude. They're just shocked at your response yeah, to yeah. their rudeness. Right. right. Um, I'm the person who responds when people interrupt me at the grocery store or interrupt when you're at like a retailer or something, you're at Target and you're talking to somebody and somebody comes up and says something. I'm like, oh, your manners are also an A5. I'm that person. Like I that yeah. is a big pet peeve for me. But yeah. um so he's like, why? And I said, honestly, 
I think you were trying to make fun of me. And I said, this uh, is what I do for a living. This is uh, my job. This isn't something funny for me. Yeah. And I said, so I find it really, really rude that you think that you can come and mock me and then I am going to take it well. Right. And so, um, and I told him, I said, you know, you have to learn that not everything is for you. Yeah. And so I don't need, you know, so she was like, you know, you handed it really, handle it really well. But I'm like, not I'm literally old enough to be this kid's mom. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't yeah. have to take this abuse from like, so I think the difference is like, I want to do my own shows and mm -hmm. I want people to be, um, happy that I'm coming, not happy that they came. Mm -hmm. So, cause when you go to college, mm -hmm. it's like, Oh, um, I don't even like poetry, but I'm so glad I came. You came for the cupcakes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And again, I, it's a beautiful experience. Absolutely beautiful experience where people can say they did not like something or they thought they didn't like something and I made them like it. Mm -hmm. I am not negating that feeling from them or from me, yeah. but I've done it for 10 years. I'm ready to go to audiences that are specifically like for me and know that I'm coming and want me to come and want me to, you know, like and then I also get to do poems that I probably wouldn't be doing at the colleges. So. Right, right. Yeah. Well, last night. I wish I'd night, forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> at this point. <laughs> you, you definitely didn't forget anything last night. I mean, just absolutely slayed. Thank you. And I was so glad that I got to see it. Um, I'm curious about, like, how much. So that was an interesting contrast, too. Uh -huh. Because, and I, and I don't mean this to shit on anybody that performed that uh -huh. night at all. But it was an interesting contrast seeing the whole day, right? The whole night. Cause yeah, because like, I got there later. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. you know, it's open mic. And so there's some folks who aren't even close to his experience yeah. or, you know, yeah. as you or as good as you. And then there's some folks that were pretty damn good. Yeah. Like there yeah. was a dude, I don't, I don't know if he's somebody in town, but he was like, kind of built like me, um, white shirt. And he was wearing like a red necklace. And I can't remember the details of his poem, but he was awesome. I'm going to have to figure that out. He was really, really good. And, uh, it, but that was an interesting thing to see throughout the night because yeah. you're, you command that stage. It was interesting to hear, to hear you say something about performance and anxiety earlier. Oh, yeah, bad. Because you were just like, you have this command of the room. It's gotten better over time. I will say it's gotten better. And that's one of the reasons why I think I stopped doing college shows. Uh, Cause I was like, I don't have anything else to give. Mm -hmm. Um, there was also a situation that happened where, uh, it's kind of petty, but like, oh fuck it, I'm, I don't have anything to lose. My ex roommate stole a poem that we wrote together and lied about stealing the poem, mm -hmm. and she had to introduce me in February. Oh shit! Yeah. yeah. So what did that feel like? I thought I would be. I didn't know because I. I'm really bad at reading emails in their entirety. <laughs> um, but I didn't know she was going to be there. So I like go to this school and they're like, oh, do you know such and such? And I was like, I hate that bitch. I'm like, oh, well, she's here. Oh, oh, wow, this is awkward. I didn't mean to say that. It slipped. Um, <laughs> the th part that hurt the most was this was somebody I really cared about at one point. Uh -huh. You know, I really like... We weren't just roommates. We were really good friends. Yeah. I think in the poetry community, it's kind of hard to have friendships when you're competing against each other. Mm -hmm. um, but it also, I went outside and I was like, no, you are going to run these poems, bitch, mm -hmm. because you are not going to mess up today. <laughs> and I did such a good job. And I was like, oh, great. Now this has to be my standard, you know? Yeah. So in a way it was good because it made me say, okay, this is your new standard, right? Like mm -hmm. you've been, listen, you've been doing a great job over here. You, you're superior, yeah. but not for you. Yeah. Take it up a notch. Um, and then it was like, okay, you can leave now. Like that was what you needed to see. Yeah. Like you can leave now. Like she can copy the recipe, but th the sauce will never taste uh, the same, you uh, know? Yeah. And that's like legitimately yeah, yeah. how I felt afterwards. Like, yeah. Like I wasn't. That's that's a good that's a good place to be. Yeah, yeah, you know. And as I age, you know, I recognize that just because the experience had badness to it doesn't mean it was a bad experience. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm still not like completely over that situation because it sure. was just a lot of gaslighting and a lot of 
she called me Florida woman, which is hilarious, you know, because she was saying, like, oh, Florida woman line. And I'm like, oh, but I pulled out the receipts later. Like I sat on the receipts. And that's a thing, too, on Twitter. I am very good with the receipts. Like I yeah, will yeah, yeah. Let me search yeah, this are. person's tweets. But <laughs> yeah, imagine yeah. like also these are messages that I have because they're sent to me. So I'm going to. I delete yeah. bitches. I don't delete, you know, text messages like. Yeah. So um, it was a way uglier debacle than, you know, we have time for it. But I maybe I'll explain in another podcast. because like I don't really have much to lose now. Okay. But um, yeah, it was just kind of like a full circle moment. And I was yeah. like, OK, this is another reason to leave. Like you've you've learned all you needed to learn, because essentially when you're performing at that type of demand for so long, where I'm performing for an hour, you know, and granted it may not be every day, but for two or three months, it's like I'm doing an hour yeah. multiple times a week. It's a lot. That's, that's a lot, yeah. you know, and you have to really, really hone your craft. Yeah. And so college shows gave me a really okay. safe way to do that. Maybe, you know, like the learning curve was sharp at first cause I still had to get it together. Yeah. Um, but a lot of poets, you know, they, oh, like do 20 minutes set is a lot for them. So to have to do an hour, like you have to learn yourself, Yeah, you know? And so that was the thing. I was like, okay, well I've, I've, I'm going to take all of the knowledge and all of the, the breath control and the learning how to emote without screaming and Mm. all of that. And I'm going to put it now into something else. So are you learning that stuff from like watching other people? Are you taking Like, are you reading things on that? Like, where does that part come from, those mechanics? So when I first started doing poetry here, Uh um, I would kind of look around and be like, I'm a really good writer. Why am I not? You know, and it's not like about receiving the acclaim, but it was, you know, interesting to see people that you felt like I'm a better writer than them win poetry slams. Yeah. And in hindsight... I'm very glad that I, I mean, I would do poetry slams and I would go to finals and, you know, I do final stage all the time, but I'm very glad I never won because I think poetry slams in particular lend very much to screaming a lot to win. Uh, uh-huh. um, now there's two people that win a lot. I would say Rudy Francisco and Ed Mabry win a lot and they're not like big on screaming. But Rudy, in particular, has a really quiet, controlled manner of speaking. Uh Um, And I wouldn't necessarily say I studied it, but I would say it allowed me to accept that I could do that. Like, I didn't have to scream in order for people to understand me that the that the words did matter. Oh, wow. And then, too, with college shows, that was a thing. Like, a lot of the poets would come and they would do the college conferences and they would, wouldn't get any schools because they would scream. And it's like, your target audience is 19-year-old white girls. They're not going to want you to scream at them. Like, oh, that is yeah. – so it had to – so college shows also forced me to be way more conversational and I think that conversational approach in my work yeah. um, resonates with people, one, because they can hear it and understand it, but also because it's way less just a poem. It's about a story that I'm telling you. Yeah. So that kind of resonates with them as well. Oh, my gosh. This is all such gold. Thank you. Plus, if I mess up, it's like wait, easier yeah. when it's conversational versus it's like, oh, yeah. you know, it's like. Perf- well, one of the things that takes me out of it, this is, this is true for music, too, like, um when i'm watching uh so like I'll, I'll i'll write folk songs like protest folk songs and i'll, I'll play them at open mics stop marley that's a good <laughs> one that's a good twitter name i just came up with stop marley oh i love that's that a good one. <gasps> Oh, you have to tell um, like my I'm Twitter so, names are like yeah. Kind of legendary. We do need to talk about yeah. that too. Yeah, um, that your Twitter names are in fact legendary. I was trying to find. I have a whole list. I was gonna say, is there a list? There's a list. I was trying to. There was a Ken Griffey Jr. reference you made, and I'm which s- one was? I, I'm trying I did, to remember what you said. <laughs> Ken Griffey. Get, it was probably Ken Griffey Jr. Mafia. <laughs> I think that was exactly what it was because it was like melding two of the things. I do that a I lot like, of the, the portmanteau of the names. Yeah, I do yeah. a lot of that one. That was great. Yeah. Nuck if you Buckingham Palace was a favorite. That's an amazing one. I saw somebody put it as their Twitter location. I was like, <laughs> middle finger. I know. I know where you got that from. 
That's funny. What is it now? Oh, it's Orlando Tragic it's today. Orlando Tragic, oh. yeah. Yeah. Too legit to quit. No, R2D2 legit to quit. <laughs> that was yesterday's. And people like oh, to send me the Twitter names. And I, I like I'm oh. actually appreciative that they send them to me. Yeah. But I don't ever use them because it takes out the, like the yeah. fun for me is like being completely high and then like <laughs> sitting there giggling because I just said the stupidest shit in the world. I'm like, yeah. ah, this is hilarious. <laughs> like that's the fun for me is yeah, like yeah. coming up with it myself. Like, you know, it's I am so honored that I was here for that moment. That uh, Saab Marley ah, has, is born. So and- I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> at you tomorrow, like Saab Marley. I, ha- I actually have, like, there's a list of maybe two hundred of them, two three hundred at oh, this wow. point. Okay. Uh, and then sometimes I have to go back because I'll forget that I haven't uh, used some of them along the way. Like I'll skip around. Yeah, yeah. So I, let me see what do I have coming up. Oh, that's fun. What do I have coming up? Um, I have. Oh, the one I came up with this morning. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. And then you see the Orlando Magic reference when Gilbert sold out arena. <laughs> That's good, too. I was like, oh, you guys are going to be mad at me. <laughs> We're going to make it worse. <laughs> That's so great. So great. But I think like when somebody's performing and they don't have, um, and I don't know if this is an ableist like attitude that I have right now. Um We'll work through it. It's fine. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm sure you'll we'll call work me out and correct me if it, if it is. But when somebody has like a fo- their phone out and they're reading oh. off the phone, it really takes it's me distracting. out of the moment. It's a definitely distraction. Yeah. It doesn't bother me if someone has like a lectern or something, you know, or a music stand. That doesn't bother me. I understand 100% <laughs> where you're coming from. Sorry about that. And I don't know why that is right yeah i don't know if it's our because like sometimes when when people write poetry they'll make a reference to something and they like text message in the poetry i'm like i hate when people say text messages in poetry because i think it's a fleeting technology mm-hmm. but it's not right yeah because it's all about universal appeal like is this going to be something that's going to be important 20 years later yeah i mean text messages Ooh, i'm sorry i'm sorry that was me uh, text messages have some or have clearly have survived. Yeah. Um, but also the phone is so small and I think it really takes, it draws the energy into the hand and mm-hmm. the people, cause like I've seen people like, okay, I'm a, and then go back. But people usually don't do that. They're so focused on the hand mm-hmm. and the letters are small. So I think there's a lot going on. I think yeah. when you have a, a larger thing to look at, people do it. Cause like, I don't necessarily like to read, but I've even read off my iPad before, and I don't even like to do that. Yeah. But I completely understand what I you're saying. My, I had a uh, public speaking teacher in, in law school, and she... Where'd you go to school? Uh, Florida Coastal in okay, Jacksonville. Okay, okay, And she called me out on... Because I had, I had my speech or whatever. And I'm a really good public mm-hmm. speaker. It's a mm-hmm. strength of mine. And so like, I had, the, I had the, uh, the sheet, and I went to go up there with it. And she's like, leave your blankie. <gasps> leave your blankie <laughs> and i was like bitch no i no I, well i needed it i needed her to say it th- yeah. like that you know uh-huh. because i think otherwise i would have kind of been stubborn about it and mm. been like no i want this thing but she kind of called me she out challenged you, right yeah. and i actually appreciated it yeah um and she was right i didn't need the fucking thing and my speech was way better without me having it there to go back to, right? I had to think on my feet more. I had to make those adjustments on the fly rather than be beholden to that. You mentioned earlier, like if, you know, sometimes you're going to miss a word or two. Yeah. And if you've got that, if it's yeah. in front of you, you're much more likely to like go back. Care or about to it. Care, care about, about it. it. Right. Yeah. yeah Versus yeah. if you're going off the cuff, like nobody knows I slipped, missed that word. Yeah. Right? You know, so when people ask me about like performance, uh, one of the things I was like, I remember my old mentor. She's not my mentor anymore. <laughs> but um, I remember the fir- podcast. That is definitely another <laughs> podcast. But she, when I told you about poetry women, but no, she, um, I saw her perform before she was even my, my mentor. I saw her perform at the showcase with like three or four other poets and she was the only woman there. And knowing her, she's just like a very larger than life character, right? Like she's yeah. just very... She dresses the part too. Like me, you would know that I'm like ridiculous over the top like person because I'm just like very like, oh, jeans and a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. But she's very like bangles and 
big hair and, you know, she had a mohawk, like just very yeah. much her personality. She just takes up all the energy and, and not necessarily in a bad way. Right. And I remember seeing her perform and she was doing this poem and she dropped the poem and, and it's like hundreds of people on there. And she goes, oh, it was a really good poem. Oh, well, move on. And I was like, and I think, right, like out of the few things that I needed to see in my career, that was one of them. Yeah. That was the thing I needed to see because what it showed me was you control the energy in the room, not them. And more importantly, the audience wants to see you win. And I always tell, I always tell like my, you know, if I do my writing workshops, I always tell them the audience wants you to win. They want to understand you. They want to, they're not, their immediate thing isn't to make fun of you. They want to, to be drawn in. That's what they're here for. Right. And if you mess up, like it's your words. So fuck it. That's what some of my students too. Like, yeah. You know, I teach uh, English and social studies and uh, yeah. I mean, if we got to mm-hmm. do a, a presentation, yeah. especially a kid who's maybe very uncomfortable in front of yeah. you know, speaking, I'm always like, we're all rooting for you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And like help it now. It's easier said than done. Oh, right? absolutely. Of course. But yeah, but I think that's such an important thing to remember is that you they control came, the energy. Yeah, yeah. You control the energy. I love that. I love that phrasing of it. I did NACA. My last NACA I did, and I'm trying not to get too messy on the podcast. <laughs> I was, my old agent um, was there. And my old agent is also represented by somebody I may or may not have mentioned in earlier in this podcast. Okay. <laughs> okay. Or represents someone now in this podcast. Uh-huh. So it was a bit of a awkwardness at first. Uh-huh. Um, but again, like I said, you know, just because I had a bad experience doesn't mean it was all bad because my old agents, they discovered me. And when I was, you know, nobody, and I probably would have quit long ago if I hadn't have had that opportunity. So, you know, thank you for, to them for sure. Uh, but NACA is a big deal. It's these college conferences where you kind of go and you say, this is me. And there's act not actors but there's there's musicians there, there's people from wild and out there's mm. met people from reno 911 there's big oh, wow. public speakers there i've uh, met a few people from the voice there actually i met pete um davidson before he was pete davidson oh that's there. pretty cool yeah and i was like i've seen you before and he was like yeah whatever <laughs> you know it was like but he this was before he was pete davidson yeah, but he yeah, was yeah. you know but he had just gotten off like he did an uh, the night tonight show or something like that. But there's a big, you know, and poets are very much in the low man on the totem pole at these conferences. Sure. And I messed up on stage in front of thousands of students. And you're literally, you have 10 minutes to convince these kids that you, they are important to you. And you should, they should bring you to their school so you can eat for the next year. Oh, uh, wow. Uh-huh. That's, that's a lot of pressure. That's, I mean, look, that the gas money that is going into that car is money from February. Like, yeah. So it's, it's, it, if you do good, you do good. You yeah, know? Yeah. Um, and I messed up on stage and I kept, and I like repeated a stanza. And at first they were like, and they just, uh, they were rocking with me. Right. And so yeah. I got off stage and I was just like, all right, I'm ready to fucking get off stage. And my old agent came up to me and he was like, Kyla. And I was like, what? And he was like, you had me worried because again, we've, we've, we've crossed the bridge, you know, the bridge yeah. burned, but we managed to get on the other side either way. And so he was like, but did you see them? And I was like, no, he was like, two thirds of them were standing up afterwards. Oh, wow. I, but I was so still like in my shit about, oh, I fucked up. Yep. And he was like, no. You were the only one that got a standing ovation. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that was just like a moment. It's like, okay, you fuck up, you keep going. Like, I think a lot of times people just get flustered and it's like, just take a step back. Like, yeah. Well, that's when that breathing and stuff comes in handy too. Yeah. And the experience because that blood pressure can get yeah. real fast. Yeah. That's like, also why I drink coffee when I perform now. Really? Yeah. Like, that's. I hate to say it, but I have developed a performance cocktail okay. of um, coffee and weed. Okay. Well, well, yeah. That is yeah. my performance yeah. cocktail. Okay. And I mean, I microdose, you know, in the morning sometimes, but it may not okay. be the day I microdose, but that's right. for the ADHD. But uh, if you hadn't noticed, but um, <laughs> because the coffee does a really good job with my memory. Oh, interesting. So it keeps me from forgetting the poems. Yeah. But the weed kind of counteracts the jitteriness of mm-hmm. the coffee and mm-hmm. kind of puts me at ease. So I'm alert, 
but I'm at ease. It's like a really nice balance between the two. So that's, that's great. 99% of the time you see me perform. There is a cup of coffee sometime during that day and a um, bowl of wheat. <laughs> That's great. I'm glad you found that. I'm well, glad you found that particular I cocktail. Am too. Right? I am too. Yeah. Um, like exactly one glass of wine before I perform. I can, I can imagine. No, because I used to do mm-hmm. alcohol and I was like, but it would fuck with the memory. But you don't seem to really like alcohol, I right? don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm peer pressured in my old... Uh, the last moments of my 30s that I have left. <laughs> uh, like, that's the running joke. It just like, gets better. Yeah. But you know what? It's <laughs> interesting. Like, I feel like this is the best time in my life that yeah. I've ever, like, and I wouldn't have imagined that, you know, 20, 30 years later, you know, yeah. like, or not later, but, um, I mean, shit, even five years ago, I was not going to be here, you know, in my mm-hmm. head. Mm. So uh, to be in a moment where I'm like, I really like myself. That's awesome. You know, like, uh, I really yeah. like myself. That's great. And I do think that that has changed even just even how I perform. Like uh, it, it makes me command the space more because yeah. I'm more confident as a person. Yeah. You know, I've, th- that makes a ton of sense. I mean, having that sense of self-worth and going like, I have something valuable to, to say yeah. and to add. Now I'm going to share that thing with you. I'm going to be way. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be way better in that moment than I am if I'm worried about, you know, not able to get out of my own way, right? Like, this is such good weed. (laughs) It's really good. I'm glad. That's awesome. She's a keeper. (laughs) She is a keeper. Yeah. Uh, I think Kyla and Chris became best friends. (laughs) But the similarities in our, like, tastes are really interesting because it's also, like, our tastes are very different. Mm-hmm. Like from the average person, yeah. so we have the same color and we like the same color. Mm-hmm. Um, the ombre pink, mm-hmm. the patterns, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think, yeah, I think our and the weed, <laughs> our tastes are different too. Chris and I's are, but it they they intersect in the right places. Mm-hmm. You know, like there are. Um, I think that's that's part of what makes us work so well. Is like I've got my my own shit, you know, and sort of my own interest mm-hmm. and taste, and she's got her own interest and taste, and then they they cross over in just the right right moments, you know. But right I appreciate the fact that um, there's so much color because like that's a fear of mine. If I ever lived with somebody, that I would have to like sacrifice. You, you see mm. how much I talk about gray walls and yeah, like hating yeah. the fact that people are like agreeable gray <laughs> and like, depression gray, like ah. I love it so much, (laughs) Um, which is because that's like a blue to me. So I love this, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you know which gray I'm talking about, though, right? I don't think so. It's this. um, It's the light gray. Okay. It's it's particularly the light gray that everybody does. Okay. That's my. Yeah. And then they'll just do the gray walls and that's it. There's like no action. There's nothing cool about the house. There's like no personality. It's like gray walls we did it yeah <laughs> look at the sterility oh my god <laughs> it's so medicinal oh i love it uh yeah so that's my i don't know like i really like really like this awesome yeah i'm, I'm glad it's been adam's family uh that hand yeah that's her hand a mold of her hand She's way cooler than me, though. <laughs> like, I would say, like, she's cooler than all. Yeah, of us. I would say her <laughs> ideas have surpassed mine a little bit. If nothing else, she's an inspiration. Yeah, she built those bookshelves out of wine boxes. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's incredible. Uh, it's inspiring. I mean, you know, yeah. my, I'm, no. I'm not good at any of that yeah. stuff. Um, but being around it, like, my discipline is writing, right? Yeah. And so, like, being around it sparks a lot you know especially the in, just the creative energy I mean, she's yeah. out in the garage right now building stuff yeah yeah right? and so i'm clearly I'm, I'm both right you know i'd be yeah, like yeah. oh okay i'm gonna build something and then i'm gonna sit and talk shit on twitter okay so let me uh, that's another question i have for you and we've been so generous with no time. you're good okay, go ahead cool. we're good all right cool i don't want to take too much no, more, we're but good. I'm interested in that because you do tweet like 400 times every second. Ah. And so I am interested in, and much to my delight, right? Yeah. <clears throat> um, but I am interested in like how, where you are, what your creative process looks like 
like, are you a get up and do the work kind of person? No. Okay. So I am very much an Iverson. <clears throat> okay. Unfortunately, <laughs> I am very Iverson. But again, <laughs> hey, I, he's one of the greats. Right. But he doesn't have a ring. So mm. if I can't be bad, at, I can't be better. And so I recognize that discipline is not my best thing. Mm -hmm. Um, this is where I name drop Michael Harriet. So I mean, he was like, you need to get on Twitter. And he was like, that's interesting. Yeah. But Michael Harriet. So I know I've known him way before he was Michael Harriet too, because uh -huh. he did uh, poetry. Okay. So um, I met him probably 10 years ago before he was, you know, we've always known each other, yeah. but he was like, you need to get on Twitter. And that's actually also how I got um, a job writing twice a week because mm. Karen Hunter would like my tweets, even the ridiculous ones. Mm -hmm. And so I said, hey, you keep liking these tweets. You can like the writing for real. I didn't say that. I'm sorry if she's listening. <laughs> no, but I was just like, hey, I know I somebody. Listening. Right. I'm, I, I know somebody who's like, you know, snarky and, you know, has a degree in history. Like, and she, I was like, not, you know, good at both. Not yeah. necessarily in that order. And she was like, all right. And so there's that's some, great. Yeah, that's she's also the person facilitating because I think that there is so much utility to Twitter. And I, yeah, I, I get a lot out of it. And it, for me, it has it's not I don't like I don't clap back like I I just I, I want to be there. You know, like, I want to be where Rihanna is, is not where she was. Because I'm definitely where she was. I want to be where she is. But I don't have as many eyes on my tweets as you do. Yeah. You, know, you, you got 30,000, however many followers. I don't even mind if people disagree. I think people purposely try to misconstrue and be ob you know, obtuse. Yeah. Um, and I always think it's like weird. Like, why would I want to play stupid for likes? Uh, uh -huh. Um... But I think people go out of their way to be rude mm. just for the sake of being contrarian. Because like, yeah. like, oh, you guys buy those computers because um, cause it was the, the MacBook tweet that went viral. Mm. Then like people, I'm like, are you serious? Like, <laughs> it's a joke. Like, yeah. and people go way too far with stuff that's like a simple joke. And I'm like, yeah. I'm just trying to make people laugh. Like, I can make you the joke if you want. Right, right. Because mm. so, the tweet was like, um, learning how to right click with a MacBook, like, requires at least a master's degree yeah and people these people vote what does that have to do mm. with me not knowing this technology on a computer i just got yeah, yeah. like what does that have to do with anything yeah, these yeah. people vote like or you guys only get these computers for aesthetics actually it was a gift yeah um and i mean sometimes i really shouldn't be as sensitive but i'm just like why do you care why do you care yeah why do you care yeah no, that makes that. Yeah, I don't know, but it, it's like what an innocuous comment that you made. Like, yeah. there's really nothing. I mean, the okay, so the Orlando tragic joke. Yeah, yeah. Oh, his <laughs> was about Adam Silver, like expanding the NBA into new cities, yeah. and I tweeted, mm -hmm. "They should bring one here to Orlando because yeah. we don't have a team." <laughs> and man, the. <laughs> Hand lovers were <laughs> upset. <laughs> they were pissed. <laughs> the hand lovers were pissed. I right before you got here, I just was like, "All right, let's see what Kyle is up to now to see if uh, like if there's any talking points on this uh, on our Twitter timeline." And it was just Orlando there, tragic. Like, I was like, "Oh, we're going in. Scrolling. We're going in. Then <laughs> we're going in." I was like, "Does this end?" Ever? No. Like, and I'm then guys like, "You've been talking about from two days." I was like, "That tweet." The original tweet was 21, 21 hours, hours ago. ago. I, saw that one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how we got two days out I'm like, of that. Where's the blue toothesis? Yeah. I like, I was, go, like, oh, yeah. I gotta but I will say that I have to temper. Like, if I'm high, you'll notice my reactions to things will be smoother. Yeah. If I'm high, I'll just, I will. I will still say something snarky if I'm high, but it's way with a less unbothered, like with a more unbothered approach. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, oh, that's crazy, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. wow. You, you. So uh, sometimes I'm like, okay, you shouldn't respond to your high, but then by that time it's too late. <laughs> well, we were just like, we started off talking about your exchange with Roy Wood Jr., which I think is just, like, about as cool as it could get, like, he, in terms of... He's so, he's, like, so nice in real life. Like, okay. he followed me, and I was yeah. like, how do these people know? Trevor Noah followed me, and that was... 
That was a day. Okay, that's what I was. That was, that was my so question. Whenever I lose followers, there are certain people I check. I'm like, is okay, Trevor still follows. Trevor's yeah. Still okay, so that was gonna be my question. Is like you've had all your 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 work has been in front of all these amazing people. Yeah, like Fucking celebrities Noah. know who I am, but I'm not a celebrity. It's so, so that's, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So is there is there other than Trevor Noah you just mentioned? Is there one that you're just like, holy shit? Oh, Lenny Kravitz. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah like when yeah. he like he was like, this is my first time seeing your work, sister. God bless. <laughs> Do you know who you are? <laughs> and so a lot of times when the celebrities were following me, I would get the notification afterwards. Yeah. But that particular notification came immediately to my phone because uh-huh. I was already following him because I wasn't following a lot of people on Instagram at first. Yeah. And that one immediately came to my phone and I was like, and I broke my shoe and I just looked at the message and I left it for a few hours and I came back. I remember I was driving home and I was like, Okay, I should respond. And I was like, um, I I don't know what to say. Like, I'm so taken aback. I broke my shoe. Um, <laughs> uh, Be cool, Kyla. Be yeah, cool. there was no cool at all. There's none. It was all gone. Um, Buster Rhymes is really nice. Um, I didn't get to meet him, but I have talked to him on the phone before. Oh, wow. And I talked to Salam Remy. That was the one that did it. Okay. So, for, so Salam Remy, people know his work, but they don't know who he is. So uh-huh. Salam Remy is like as prolific as Timbaland, as prolific as the Neptunes, and um, I guess Dr. Dre, right? But oh, he yeah. is not like – so he's done work for the Fugees, okay. um, Nas. Uh, wow. This see. is my the black eyed peas. Uh, yeah, yeah, like he's, that was my high school CD collection. Today. Yeah, so yeah. So IPs. he <laughs> also was my my favorite singer was Amy Winehouse. Uh huh. And he did most of Frank, her first album, and half of Back to Black. Oh wow! So to me, I've always said like I hope that my work touches people the way that Amy Winehouse's work touches me because she legitimately saved my life. Like, oh wow. I was in a really abusive relationship when I first started listening to her and she like just her music really helped me get out of that situation. Mm -hmm. Um, And so to listen years later to like Salam, Oh yeah, I've seen her work. And I was like, I'm like, and I was like, my birthday is like right around hers. And he was like, Oh, you're a Virgo. And I was like, Oh, this is a moment. I don't even know what Virgo means, but this is a moment. (laughs) But that, like that was kind of, that one brought me to tears because I, knew that I would never be able to talk to Amy Winehouse, right? Like, but to know that I was talking to someone who got to create with her yeah, yeah. was like otherworldly. Yeah. Uh, otherworldly. Well, the yeah. power of yeah. art. Yeah. The power of the, the human connection yeah, that, that was it has. otherworldly. Yeah. That's amazing. That one was the one I think that was um but yeah, like I mean there were other celebrities of you know met or not met, but like in you know, interacted with online and they're like, I love your work. Yeah. Um, Tiana Taylor's husband likes my work. Uh-huh. I don't know if Tiana loves it, but I love her very, very much. <laughs> um, so I hope she likes it. Um, so yeah, I mean, but for the most part, they've just like been very like, Oh, I love your work. It's like really dope. And I'm like, yeah. Lily Allen, oh, Lily wow. Allen too, which I listened to smile about. I probably owe her money, <laughs> but you know, my wire is a weird thing. You know? <laughs> So she's like, I'm, you know, I'm imagining this is what she said because she was writing it. She, I'm going down a rabbit hole of your work, you know. <laughs> like, and I was like, you're Lily Allen. Like, get out of here. <laughs> oh, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, those are kind of the interactions. But I'm always, because I'm nicer, on, you know, I'm I'm sweeter on Instagram than I'm on Twitter. So uh-huh. I'm like always. Like these celebrities are seeing me tweet like this. I'm not gonna get a job. <laughs> this is awful. Stop doing this. This is bad. Please don't stop. Stop. <laughs> uh, that's a like really good segue into what we usually end on, which is the art that you're inspired by okay. at the moment. Like what has you fired up? Something you're listening to, or a film you saw, or some poetry, or something. Jeez, that's awful. Ah, uh, okay. This is weird. This is nice. a quote I saw today. Nice. Um, it's when I tell you where the quote is from, <laughs> I don't know if you'll agree, but it was a quote that resonated with me more than it probably should have. Oh, interesting. Um, 
it was where did I get this girl? I'm too sensitive. I need to be slightly numb in order to regain the enthusiasms I once had as a child. Oh, interesting. That was Kurt Cobain in his suicide note. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that I needed to hear that. Today. Yeah. Yeah. I did though. Yeah. But oh, that did kind of uh made me think about like younger Kyla. Yeah. Uh this is kind of like a but Billy Joe Armstrong from the um from Green Day uh-huh. followed me on Instagram. Uh-huh. And I was just like, Do you know who you are? Now? It's so when that shit happens, it doesn't happen to me with the frequency that it seems to happen to you, but it does happen to me where there's like somebody from my childhood that yeah. now knows who I am. Yeah. It, 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 on some level. Yeah, right? no, and I was just like yeah. You know, even, I mean, obviously, I, I definitely listen to Green Day songs. I mean, I grew up in Seminole County. But yeah, yeah. also, <laughs> it was interesting because it was like I was cool for five seconds in my head yeah. because it was like all the cool kids listened to Green Day. Like, you know, they were the, the you know, yeah. the, the re- rebel band for middle schoolers. Sure. And, um, and it was even kids that didn't think that I was cool that listened to Green Day. Yeah. So to have like somebody like that literally oh, the lead validating. singer. Yeah. It was like a yeah. fuck yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm yeah. Like 12 year old Kyla. Like I told y'all. Yeah. I, tried, like, I was trying to tell y'all. I even had one of my middle school bullies message me on Instagram. Interesting. Yeah. And like, how did that go? I'm I don't do well with people substituting I recognize we were children. Yeah. But the way that I was made fun of was a particularly harsh way. Uh-huh. Um and not to like segue too far away because I know we were trying to wrap it up, but That's okay. um, you know, growing up in a predominantly white neighborhood there were very few other black kids Uh and particularly like the black boys were kind of made fun of me and it was it was a different Hmm. thing because when white kids made fun of me they made fun of me when black boys would make fun of me they would make fun of my black femaleness Ah. so um like i have my hair straightened today um but i've I've never had a weave, right? Like, and it, yeah. people are like, oh, no, it's, this is all me. But I had really long braids uh-huh. and they were they were my hair. And he used to say, it's not fair. It's not fair. Give the horses back their hair. And so even that, I was like, I'll never get it now. Like, and I've had braids since then, but yeah. like, yeah, it was very much targeted because he knew that it was something that um was specific about my demographic. It wasn't, right. you're weird. Yeah. It was very much like, uh, especially yeah. sensitive spot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was, that's a real dig. That's a real and intentional. I think, yeah, dig. I think too, it was very much like there were so few of us mm-hmm. that should have been someone that was protecting me felt very much like somebody who was, you know, just fattening me up for slaughter in a way. You know, yeah. It was just very much a, you know, like it was very targeted. And so when he messaged me, he was like, I see you doing your thing. And I was like, I see you or not. I didn't say that out loud. Yeah, yeah, I was just yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Since we're talking about appearance, I don't want to misrepresent. The guy that I mentioned earlier was probably more muscular than me, and I said he was uh-huh. built like me. So when you see him, don't be like, what the fuck? Who the fuck no, do you think no. he is? No, no. I don't care about that. <laughs> it just made me think yeah, about it. Yeah, no, like, no. <laughs> but, um, he was a store, short, stocky dude. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'll, I'll have to go back and ask Orange uh, who that was. Yeah. But, um, okay, I'm sorry. We have to go back to where we no, were. No, it's okay. I really I appreciate it. I segue a lot. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so glad you do. I mean, we do. That's how it it's a free flowing conversation about the creative good, process good. with creative people. So like that's let it marinate. Exactly. This is what we do. Um, the, okay. I know I said I was gonna let you go, but You're we good. didn't, we You're didn't good. talk about your friend Matt in Tennessee that much. Matt, and We love Matt. So like I could really, I remember when that happened, yeah. you know, and reading about it and everything. And, uh, the, as a teacher, you know, I think yeah. I even tweeted at the time something like, because I don't think I was in a classroom at that moment. I think I was like, t- no, I, I, that's, I'll tell you what it was. I was working, my kids were all in Brooklyn, and uh-huh. I was teaching remotely at the time. So I wasn't in a Florida classroom. But my last oh, good year, yeah, well, unfortunately, I'm 
kind of back, but oh. any, different, different time, different, okay. different discussion. All right, all right. Um, but what I, the, in 2020, I had a civics group, right? Uh, seventh graders, civics class. And um, this is right when DeSantis is starting to like be, be on dick. his shit. Yeah. Um, and he always, always was a dick, but he yeah. was like, he was Dicky. starting to do the real big stuff. And the, the election was coming up, the 2020 election. <sighs> and I'm teaching civics, right? Yeah. And I've got a pretty diverse group of kids. Okay. Um, so I went to my principal and I was like, listen, um, who happens to, I guess, relative to, relevant to the story uh, is black. Uh huh. And I went to her and I was like, listen, I want to make sure that my black kids and my gay kids know I got their back. And Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that through my actions. Mm -hmm. Like, There's no substitute. They can see right through some bullshit. So like I'm going to have to show them that they can trust me. But I also want it like I want them to walk into my room and feel like, oh, okay, Comfort. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I'd really like to put up a Black Lives Matter flag and a pride flag in my classroom. Is that okay with you? And Uh-oh. she took a beat and she was like, yeah, okay, I'm glad good. you're doing that. I got your back. Yeah. Right. So that's 2020. That's you before can Stop never Woke do that Act. Today. Right. You can that's never bef- do that like, you know, so like yeah. I ended up teaching again at a, at a, at a white charter school, predominantly white charter school. Charter school. Yeah. I'm going to have to come back because I <laughs> have things about the charter school. Well, this was a school that like they almost openly admit that they didn't want their kids going to school with black kids. So they mm. opened a charter school. Like they don't, of course don't use that exact language. language. It's always coded language. It's always mm. coded, but it's like re- the schools weren't good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's like, because we took all kids. the money out of them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And this, and this place does have money and you know, <laughs> look at nonsense. <laughs> little co-host. Little co-star. You rascal. Um, but I left, and I don't, I'm not proud of this. I'm just being honest. I left that Black Lives Matter flag in a box because I was like, I could get su- yeah, sued. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. Mean, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. If I knew my principal had my back, it might be different, right? And so, like, I really feel for Matt, and, like, mm-hmm. he was doing a good thing. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? He was doing a good thing introducing his kids to your work, <laughs> and... It just really, I don't know if I have a question here at all or anything other than just like it bre- it broke my heart, you know, and I'm just so glad that, that he was using your work, but like. He, yeah, he also gave them a Ta-Nehisi Coates essay first. Yeah. And that experience was interesting because like I said, I went to the um, hearing for him being fired uh-huh. and I wish I would have said this at the fucking time, but you know, there was that, what is that thing called when there's like a whole term for it? Something elevate or something uh, when you wish you would have said something in the mm, moment. Mm-hmm. But it was interesting because they kept saying that I and ta Coates, and for those who don't know, he's like a super acclaimed professor at Howard, um, were not credible sources. And I was like, how could I not be a credible source to my own experience? Right. And then sitting around a table being, you know, effectively unkindly interviewed about my space in this world by a group of white people. And no one ever thought that that was white privilege in itself, Mm -hmm. that I had to validate who I was in my experience and run it by these people who disagreed with it. And so therefore it was voided. Yeah. Um, and like I said, when the, the lawyer found out that what my degree was, he kind of stopped talking. Mm. Uh, he really wrapped those questions up quickly. Um, it was just a really, I had like mixed emotions about it because I was like, Oh my God, like somebody was fired for showing my work. Yeah. Um, but also a beautiful friendship has blossomed from that. Like, That's great. Um, I'm in their family group chat. I probably am not as active <laughs> as I should be, but we play Wordle every day. Aww. So, or sometimes like I'll play it like at midnight and I'm like, I'm not going to text, but you know, uh, uh-huh. they're actually way better at it than I am. <laughs> um, I mean, his niece knows me. Hi, you know, like, oh, uh, that's fun. yeah, May, she knows me and stuff. So, um, I mean, I've spent time with their, their, you know, their that's family, awesome. like, you know, so, yeah. uh, 
I really enjoy them as people and love them as people. I just hate that that was the circumstance that, you know, it had to be under. Like, that was how we became friends. And uh, But he lost his job. It was about two years now. And, I mean, it's been stressful because, you know, he's a, a teacher in the middle of Tennessee, and that was very much a part of who he was. Yeah. And I wouldn't say his identity, but – he identified as a teacher, you know, yeah. it, it brought him a lot of joy. Yeah. Uh, we did a college show together and even just knowing him for the last two years, it was really interesting to see him change over time mm-hmm. because it did change him a lot mm-hmm. and it made him kind of way more like, no, I got to assert my space mm. even for him. So that's great. Yeah. That's like I been really an like that experience. Yeah. yeah. That's, that says a lot about him. Yeah. Um, Cause well, he's like legitimately one of the nicest people ever. Yeah. Yeah. And so sometimes like when you're very nice, sometimes people take advantage of that. So it's been really good seeing him say, no, I'm, I'm, this is beyond my boundary. And yeah. you know, I, I don't agree. Man. Kyla, this has been, you want to guess how long we've been talking? Two hours. Hour and a half. Ah! Um, you got stuff to do (laughs) yeah i'm supposed to go um, be uh, the greatest god mom today so Um, i'm the greatest god mom every day (laughs) but i I love my god kids so i have some that live here some in atlanta so awesome Mm -hmm. well good go about it and i am uh i'm definitely gonna make sure that i make your performance um the hour-long performance yes um I'm gonna do I'm two more this year here. Okay. So if you don't if you don't get that Good. one, I'm gonna do another one with Orange Shoes runs last night's show. Uh huh. Technically the other one is, but I think the the one that I'm doing at his show will be shorter as well. So I got an email today. It was a nice touch. I got oh, he an sent e- you an email? Yeah. I I assume it was just like a mass email sent yeah. to everybody who went, right? But it was just like, thanks for coming out. And then, of course, it was selling his next thing. Yeah. But, but I was just was like, like... good marketing. Was, yeah, that was like a really yeah, nice touch, yeah. you know? Because I did have a blast. Like, I, I'm going to try to go back. I am marketing, so... Uh, which is weird for somebody with a, a fair social media presence. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm pretty shitty at marketing. I don't have a clue how to do any of it. You know, I, I don't know, know how, how to, to promote myself. I know how to say myself. controversial things. <laughs> I'm yeah, good at that. If <laughs> yeah, I can't do, do anything, I can get under some skin and exfoliate. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Oh, well, thank you so much. No, this thank you for awesome. having me. It was a blast for real. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. It was fire. <laughs> <laughs> Kyla Janae Lacey, y'all. Thank you so much, Kyla. Thank all of you for listening. That's right, Kyla.com for all things Kyla. That's that's W-R-I-T-E-K-Y-L-A dot com for all things Kyla Janae Lacey. You can buy her album, The End of an Air, on Bandcamp or over there on her website. Give her a follow on social media, y'all. If you're not convinced to follow her on Twitter by now, I'm not sure what else I can say. Catch her live if she comes to your town. Um... Her performance, as I mentioned in this conversation, was incredible here at Binks Coffee in Orlando. Um, And then getting to talk to her the next day, this was maybe the most fun I've ever had making the show. Like, despite the fact that we touched on such like heavy topics, we still had a fucking blast. And I'm I'm such a fan of hers, and I have a feeling this will not be the last time she appears on the Marinade. Marinadepodcast.com for all things the Marinade. We got written pieces. We got photography. We have our much in need of updating online store and more. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Spoutable, and Twitter. Subscribe and give us a five-star rating on your podcast app. Tell a friend about the show. These are all free ways to support the Marinade. And we really appreciate every little bit. If you can swing it, consider joining our Patreon community, y'all. Just two bucks a month, you can gain access to Patreon-exclusive content, like our show Jason's Journey, where I talk about the moments that shape my creative life and provide a window into the process of making the Marinade. Y'all, you can now try a free trial of Patreon. Let's see if you like it. Seven days. Uh, set a reminder on your phone. So if you want to cancel after seven days, you can. But if you like it, it's just two bucks a month and it, keep going with it. We have all kinds of fun stuff up there. We have our monthly show called What We're Getting Down On. That's a conversation between me and my good friend, Peter Haroldson, where we talk about the art that has us fired up at the moment. The most recent episode of that, I talk about Kyla's work and give a little bit more of a behind the scenes into how this conversation came to be, kind of told the the origin story of how I got into her work and connected with her. Um, 
we're going to take all this money that we get from the pa- Patreon. Or if you uh, if you don't want to commit and you just want to like give us a, a, a tip because you like this particular episode, you can Venmo or PayPal us. It's just at the marinade. And all the money goes right back into making the show. Right now, what that means specifically is we're going to Bonnaroo, y'all. We got approved to cover Bonnaroo. It's coming up in a few days, and we could use your help getting there. So, um, you know, if you want to do the Patreon, we'd love for you to be there and enjoy all that content. If you just want to give us a tip at the marinade, I'm just taking that money and putting it in the into my Mazda and, and driving to Bonnaroo with it. So we really appreciate it if you can swing it. If not, we're just grateful that you listen, y'all. Thank you for listening. Thank you for spreading the word about the marinade. Until next time, go out and create something. Cheers, y'all.